Hello, Ralph Cabbage, Aquaman Knox. Today we're looking at the Eheim Professional 4 Plus 600 model. This is part of our ongoing series comparing canister filters and the canister filter war. Okay, we're just gonna open this box up and see what's inside, give you my first thoughts, and then we'll hook it up and we'll do some more thorough testing after that. First of all, the unit, one thing you'll notice when you pull it out of the box right away is it does not feel like a 2217 or some of the others. It doesn't seem to really hold the, the name professional. So it, it's for, my first impression is not that great for something with a name like it has and from a company like Eheim. That being said, that's not the only thing we're gonna judge, so we're not gonna throw it in the garbage just based on that. First of all, the tubing. They, they got away from the ugly green tubing and now they went to gray. The quality of tubing is really no different. It's okay, average. Every canister filter out there, they seem to send okay, average tubing. I, I wish they would send me clear tubing or really flexible tubing or really nice tubing, uh, but instead we have okay, gray tubing has Eheim written all the way up the, the side. Same tubing for the inlet and the outlet port for this model. Quick disconnect, first thing you'll notice is this, you cannot move or rotate it. Uh, it's fixed into position. Does have an easy indication of on and off. So off and then you should be able to pull it loose by pushing in the button. So that is fairly straightforward and easy, on and off learning from people screwing things up i'm assuming when it's on you cannot release it so it has a safety built into that so it has to be in the off position for you to be able to push and release what they call a quick disconnect double tap whatever the name you'd like to call it uh it looks like you have adjustable flow here and it's a mechanical type flow and then we'll look on the inside of the unit. The clips are big and beefy, which all of these seem to have to be for this um, a square size canister. Priming on the top, you can hear that valve. Nothing special there. Uh, inside of it, uh, a lot of room is taken up by the way this top tray works. Um, but that's just from the top unit. So you've got a flapper little valve there which helps in the priming process and this is the final stage of filtration they're using a sponge so the water is going to go down uh, through the bottom of this canister filter and then back up and be pulled through the top now you'll notice that there is a nice suction right there so that seals really good on the canister head and that is a good thing So it's used, using a translucent gray material, uh, seems to be okay, in reverse order. We're using a plastic meaty here for mechanical. There's two trays of this. I'm not a big fan of this media. Um, I think the meaty that comes in the Biomaster, if you're going to use a plastic one, has better surface area and more than this. I also don't like the fact that it's light and moves around a lot. You tend to spill it a lot. I just don't prefer plastic media in any canister filter for the bottom. I like the old school uh, ceramic pieces or biometric, something larger for that mechanical filtration. Um, I know why they use this. It's light. It's easy to ship. They don't have to worry about stuff. I'm sure it's less expensive. Um, so you have two trays of that. Then you have one tray of their uh, biological media. And this is one specifically that EM has. They're small little chips. You got to be sure and take them out of the bag before you start it, obviously. This is going to be equivalent in a competitor to um, Matrix or Biomatrix, and um, it's okay. I mean, I, it's, uh, it, you know, if you're going to get something in a canister, I would say that's a good thing what they're sending that with. I don't know that this particular media, and I've used it before, is anything special like Ciparex or anything like that. It's not near that level of filtration but it is good biological filtration. It comes with the unit, so I would use that if I had it. 
and then we go up to their last chamber before that this this pre-filter if you will that's their pre-filter chamber um, and here we go I had I saw some complaints from some of the reviewers online about hard to get these trays together um, and that they seem like they would break I don't see that at all so I don't think that that's something that you should be concerned about with this particular model uh, now we use, they get to their F substrate, the round, and this round biological media, I, I do actually like. I've used it a lot in the past, and uh, it does really well. It comes with one tray of that. Um, I would probably take on this canister filter, I would, if I was going to use this canister filter, I would take one layer, I would take the little black fittings out all together. You can use it, it comes with it. I would replace that with, with a, a ring type uh, ceramic ring at the bottom and I would have another layer of Biomatrix by Aqualife in there combined with these biological medias, that should be fine. And then there's your fine coarse filter. And, and that's nice, you get the, the fine filter at the end. Now these are proprietary, you're gonna have to buy these because of the crazy shape. If you want them to be exact, you're gonna have, they're die cut. You're gonna have to buy that from Eheim. Uh, otherwise, you, what you can do is you can actually purchase um, bonded padding, blue bonded padding, like you've seen me in other videos. Use this as a template, cut it out, and then just cut the circular hole out. But they've limited the design of this. They've limited what you can do. So the way this unit works, it goes into place just like that. It is a little bit finicky to get together, but then once you get it together, it seems pretty straightforward. I don't think you would get uh, much bypass from this with the material that they have laid out. We're going to find that out when we test it. And then the last chamber is right here. So water comes in. Um, it would be pre-filtered by this pre-filter, and then water goes all the way to the bottom, back up, and back out. So they're trying to get that pre-filter to the top, I guess for easier cleaning is the idea behind that. Um, and it may and it may not work very well. I'm not too excited about the design of it, of that part, but we'll see how it works and we'll go from there. So here we go, let's put it all back together. I'm gonna take these and rinse them. I rinsed these medias off a little bit. They are extremely dusty. This, this new media they're using. Um, I know that's supposed to have a high surface area. I still prefer the Biomatrix. This is the lighter media, the Epi Substrate. Um, again, it's not near as dusty as that new media, but it is still dusty. Can't fill up the trays too full or you can't get them together, so always be conscious of that. And then we put this whole thing back together again. And the trays don't hang together, so we're going to have to put them in individually. Which, again, that light media drives me crazy. Coming out of there and falling out. So just, just in messing with this, it isn't quite as easy to pack as some of the other units that work this same way it's a little bit more i mean it's not a big deal but it is not quite as easy as you would expect it to be and you have to line it up just the exact way it only goes on one way which just pay attention to that pretty straightforward And now we're gonna hook it up. Let's see what's else in this box. We mentioned the tubing. Instruction manual. Which they're going to use all types of instructions are usually not very good coming out of Europe or anywhere else into the United States. I don't know why they don't let people help them with this, but none of the manufacturers do that. I think they rely on like Google Translate or something and drives me crazy. So the instructions are usually um, 
not very good. And that's not just for them, that's for any company. So you got a bag of, of parts in here. Spray bar, some people like, some people don't. If you're gonna use this for aquascaping, you're gonna wanna upgrade all of this to glassware, surface skimmers, things that are better. But for the purpose of this, we'll compare what's exactly in the box. Um, in the bag, typical Eheim, you have the um, clamp for the, the tubing that goes on the top of the canister. And then you're gonna have um, inlet strainer, this is the goes to the unit itself. And for sake of this, I understand this tank is not the right size for this. We'll cut that off, but we're going to use the same size test tank for every one just to get a feel for for how they flow and how they work. And then it comes with the typical Eheim suction cups. Everyone knows what everyone thinks about suction cups. They work when they work, and then they stop working. And then you've got little feet to go on the bottom of the canister. These are not very nice for a canister of this level. Those little stick-on feet. I'd like to see some big, beefy um, feet that are really offer some padding and vibration when you drag those heavy canisters in and out of cabinets. It's nice to have something that's not going to just pull off. And uh, you'd want to put that on now before you fill it up with water, obviously. But they're just little stick-on feet for vibration. I'm not a big fan of these. Not this particular one. You need better ones. Big canister, expensive canister like this should have better feet, snap-in feet that actually do something and stay in place. Every canister filter company needs to pay attention to that. Two for the outlet, two for the inlet. All the same size. Spray bar, cap, or plug. More accurate. Your outlet and your inlet. You will connect the spray bar to the outlet with a small piece of tubing. If you have trouble getting this on here, you can wet it or use, remember, the cat mug. Heat up that water two minutes in the microwave, then you can get anything on that one. Spray bars, you wanna put them under the water and have them just slightly turned up so that then you can adjust this at any point later. But you want to have them break the surface, especially if you don't have a surface skimmer, so that you don't get a buildup of film and it helps with aeration. Unlike your um, 2217, the old school unit, this unit will prime itself. Um, we're going to cut the tubing just directly in half now. It's clearly, like, as I said, it shows you arrows for outlet and inlet. You turn and release this is the easiest way to snap this back on. This little, these little guys will hold the tubing on there securely. It works like a strap. It is a strap, but it's a dual little strap. And that's okay. I don't, I don't know that I like that better than the screw-on type or the reverse thread type, but it does seem to work. Outlet, inlet, and I understand that this inlet is not exactly right because the tank's short. You can cut this off, and you should cut this off based on the height of your aquarium. We are going to leave it just at an angle like that just for the sake of the test. It does not affect anything. This is obviously not a fish tank. I even have warm water in here so this tubing will be a little more pliable and my nice delicate hands will stay warm. <laughs> We're just going to use one suction cup for this because again that's not how we would normally use uh, the unit. It would uh, You would cut that off to the right length for the aquarium. Have it just above the uh, water line. And now let's see how easy it is to prime. Yes. 
So definitely not as easy to get started as some of the other units. I would have thought that that would actually start a lot easier. But I'm just going to try it old school and see. Oh, look at that. Okay, I was that drove me crazy, so I did not wait on that. I started it just like you would have started a 2217. All the canister filters are going to purge all their air now. And I'm going to get a towel since I decided to throw water everywhere. And you can see in a tank this small, or any smaller aquarium, you're gonna, it's gonna, the canister's gonna take a lot of water into it. So it's gonna take a certain amount of water in, and you're gonna have to add water back to the aquarium. Okay, we have it ready. We'll plug it in and see what she sounds like and do a decibel reading test at this point. See what the flow's right like first. Now it's purged the air, and you can see we're gonna have good flow. I'm gonna leave this above the water line to show you the flow. We'll do this on all of them to show the the flow. So that's the flow that the unit gives you. Here are the specs on the unit. Um, Eheim recommends them uh, for 63 up to 150 a gallons. They claim this is 300 gallons per hour, uh, which it probably is. 16 watts um, of uh, power is the electrical consumption. The pre-filter volume is 0.5 liters. That's the pre-filter that's on the top of the unit. We'll do a decibel reading test first and I'll push this under the water. The flow seems to be pretty good. Um, I didn't start up stunk. I had to start it by hand. I know that's supposed to work and they're probably gonna tell you to keep pushing on that thing. I know with the bigger plungers and with the fluvals, they just work and they work really fast. So I don't know why that one needs, to, needs more messing with, but it did. The, bio, the media it comes with, it's okay. The trays, there's nothing wrong with those. I've seen reviews where they're, you know, there's stuff wrong with them. They do limit you because of their design, uh, and you have to use only certain types of media. Some of the biological media they send you on this unit is good, and some's not. You can hear a hum in this canister, and without, I'll have to get, get the test results to prove it, but I believe it's actually louder than the 2217. I know it's not quieter than the Owasa unit. It's not loud. I mean, in a cabinet, it wouldn't be loud, but you hear it. We'll do one reading right here at camera height. Thirty-five, right at camera height. Thirty-five. Now these things are—they're very accurate, so they're going to pick up room noise, transformers, everything that's in the room. And we can actually demonstrate that by turning off the unit. So the room is at thirty-two before the filter's hooked up.
34.3 uh, with it hooked up. So now we'll look close. I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna, you, the next test I'm gonna do is one foot away from the canister filter head. Thirty-eight decibels. One foot. Thirty-eight decibels. Camera. Thirty-four point five decibels. Okay. That is the Heim Professional Four Plus Six, and we're going to move on to some other units. Overall. This is an okay canister filter. I have to say I've used every single canister filter that I'm going to show you for extended periods of time. I mean years. This one I have not. So full disclaimer, the Eheim Professional 4 Plus 600 I have not used um, on an aquarium for any extended a period of time beyond a year. Okay. Now I want to tell you just based on what I've done test wise and this 4 Plus I would not buy this canister. I just it's not going to make it into my top three list. I don't think the dollar value compared to the quality and the feature set that you get is is comparable to some of the other models I'm going to make. I'm going to give it an average rating. Eheim's hard to get a hold of in North America. Very few places you can get parts and pads and you have to go online. Very few local stores has this professional 4 plus 600. So this is not a filter that I would put the, at the top of my list for all of those reasons. You saw the trouble I had starting it. Uh, the way it feels, not so great. I'm not a huge fan of the way they did their pre-filter uh, sponge, but uh, I'm going to play with that and take it apart and check it out a little more, and I may addend this if I see any difference in that. So far in just a quick test, I do not see that that would change anything. I'm Ralph Cabbage, Aquaman Knox. Be sure and subscribe to my channel. I've got 50 more canister filters to do. I spent a fortune getting all these in here. Have a great day.